live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2020 San Francisco. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's CUBE's coverage here in San Francisco at the Moscone Center for RSA Conference 2020. I'm John Furrier, your host. As cybersecurity goes to the next generation, as the new cloud scale, cyber threats are out there, the real impact to companies, business, and society will be determined by the industry, the technology, and the people. Got a CUBE alumni here, General Jaffer, SVP, Senior Vice President, Strategy and Corporate Development for IronNet. Welcome back. Thanks, Sean, good to be here. Thanks for coming. So it's IronNet, I see General Keith Alexander, and you got a new, new CEO over yeah. there. Bill Welsh, Bill come out Welsh. of Zscaler and Duo. Knows how to scale up a company. That's right. Iron Nest doing really well. The Iron Dome, the vision of collaboration and yep. signaling. Congratulations on your success. Thanks. What's the quick update? Well, look. I mean, you know, we have now built uh, the capability to share information across multiple companies, multiple industries, with the government in real time at machine speed. Really bringing people together, not just creating collective security or collective defense, but also collaborating in real time to defend one another. So you're able to divide and conquer, go after the enemy the same way they come after you, and beat them at their own game. So this is the classic case of offense, defense. Most corporations are playing defense, whack-a-mole, redundant, not a lot of efficiency, a lot of burnout. Exactly. Not a lot of collaboration, but everyone's talking about the who the attackers are and collaborating like a team. Right. And you guys talk about this mission. Exactly. This is really the new way to do it. That's the only way to work. It is, and you know, you see kids doing it out there when they're playing Fortnite, right? They're collaborating in real time across networks uh, to, you know, to play a game, right? You can imagine that same construct when it comes to cyber defense, right? There's no reason why one big company, a second big company, and a small company can't work together to identify all the threats, see that common threat landscape, and then take action on it, trusting one another to take down the pieces they have to focus on, and ultimately winning the battle. There's no other way a single company is going to be able to defend itself against a huge nation state that has virtually unlimited resources and virtually unlimited human capital. You've got to come together, defend across multiple industries, uh, collectively and collaboratively. Jamil, we talked about this last time, and I want to revisit this, because I think it's super important. I think it's the most important story that's not really being talked about in the industry, and that is, is that we were talking last time about the government protects businesses. If someone dropped troops on the ground in your neighborhood, the government would protect yes. you. Digitally, that's not happening, so there's right. really no protection for businesses. Do they build their own militia? Do they build their right. own army? Who, what's going to, who's going to be their heat shield? So this is a big conversation, and it brings, it brings the question, the role of the government, we're going to need a digital air force, yeah. we're going to need a digital army, navy, navy seals, we need to have that force, and this is going to be a policy issue, but in the short term, businesses and individuals are sitting out there being attacked by sophisticated, mission-based teams of hackers and nation states, right. either camouflaging or hiding, and, but right. attacking still. That's this right. is a huge issue. What's going on? Are people talking about this in D.C.? Well, John, look, not enough people are talking about it, right? And forget D.C., we need to be talking about it here, out, out here in the Silicon Valley with all these companies here at the RSA floor and bring up the things that you're bringing up because this is a real problem we're facing as a nation. The Russians aren't coming after one company, one state. They're coming after our entire election infrastructure. They're coming after us as a nation. The Chinese may be coming after one company at a time, but their goal is to take our intellectual property as a nation, repurpose it back home, and win the economic game, right? The Iranians, the North Koreans, they're not focused on individual actors, but they are coming after individual actors. We can't defend against those things, one man, one woman, one company on an island, one, one agency, one state. We've got to come together collectively, right? Work state with other states, right? If we're going to defend against the Russians, California might be really good at it. Rhode Island, small states, can be real hard defense against the Russians. But if California and Rhode Island come together, here's the threats I see, here's the threats you see, share information, that's great, then we collaborate on the defense. We work together, you take these threats, I'll take those threats, and now we're working as a team, like you said earlier, like those kids do when they're playing Fortnite, and now we're changing the game. Now we're really fighting the real fight. You know, when I hear G General Keith Alexander talking about his vision with IronNet and what you guys are doing, I'm inspired because it's simply put, we have a mission to protect our nation, our people, and our businesses. And he puts it in kind of military, military terms, but in reality, it's a simple concept. Yeah. We're being attacked, defend and attack back. Yeah. It's just basic stuff, but to make it work is the sharing. Yeah. So I got to ask you, um, first of all, I, loved, I love what he's, his, his vision, I love what you guys are doing. 
How real are we? What's the progression? Where are we on the yeah. progress bar of that vision? Yeah, well you know, a lot's changed to the last year and a half alone, right? The threat's gotten a lot, a lot more real to everybody, right? Used to be that industry would say to us, yeah, we want to share with the government, but we want something back for it, right? We want them to show us some signal too. Today, industry is like, look, the Chinese are crushing us out there, right? We can beat them at, a, at some level, but we really need the government to go do its job too. So we'll give you the information we have on an anonymized basis. You do your thing, we're going to keep defending ourselves. And if you can give us something back, that's great. So we've now stood up in real time with DHS. We're sharing with them huge amounts of data about what we're seeing across six of the top 10 energy companies, some of the biggest banks, some of the biggest healthcare companies in the country, right, in real time with DHS, and more to come on that. More to come with other government agencies, and more to come with, with some of our partners across the globe, right? Partners like those in Japan, Singapore, uh, Eastern Europe, right, our allies in the Middle East. They're all on the front lines of this threat. We can bring them better capability. They can help us see what's coming at us in the future, because as those enemies out there are testing their weapons in those local areas. I want to get your thoughts on the capital markets, because obviously financing's critical, yeah. and you're seeing successful venture capital formulas like ForgePoint, yeah. C5, really specialized funds on cyber, but not classic industry formation sectors, like yeah. it's not just security industry. They're taking a much more broader view, because there's a policy implication, there's an organizational behavior, right. there's technology up and down the stack, so it's a much broad investment yeah. thesis. What's your view of that? Because do you, do you see that as uh, the formula? And if so, what is this new aperture, this new lens of investing to be successful in funding companies? Yeah. Well look, it's really important what companies like ForgePoint are doing, venture capital funds, right? Don Dixon, Alberti, Pez, Will Lin, they're really innovating here. They've created the largest cybersecurity focused fund, they just closed it recently, in the world, right? And so they're really focused on this industry. Partners like C5, Kleiner Perkins, Ted Schlein, Andre Pienaar, doing really great work in this area. Also, really important capital formation, right? And let's not forget other funds, Ron Gula, right? The, the founder of Tenable, uh, starting his own fund out there in DC in the DMV area. There's a lot of innovation happening in this country and the funding on it's critical. Now look, the reality is, is the easy money's not going to be here forever, right? So the question is what comes when that inevitable step back, we don't, nobody likes to talk about it. It's like the guy who, who bets on the other side of the craps game in yeah. Vegas, right? You don't want to be that guy, but let's be real. I mean, that day will eventually come, and the question is how do you bring some of these things together, right? Bring these various pieces together to really create long-term strategies, right? And that's, I think, what's really innovative about what Don and Alberto are doing, is they're building portfolio companies across a range of areas to create sort of an end-to-end -end capability, right? Andre's doing things like that, Ted's doing stuff like that. It's a, it, that's real innovation in the VC market, right? And we're seeing increased collaboration, VC to PE, it's looking a lot more similar, right? And now we're seeing innovative vehicles like SPACs that are taking companies public in sort of the reverse manner, right? There's a lot of interesting stuff happening there with Hank Thomas and the guys at Chief Cyber Ventures. So a lot of really cool stuff going on in the financing world. Opportunities for young, smart entrepreneurs to really move out in this field and to do it now when money's still, still relatively easy to come so by. So innovation on the capital market side, which is awesome. Uh, let's talk about the ecosystem. Every single yeah. market sector that I've been over my 30 year career has been about a successful entrepreneurship, check, capital, yeah. to formation of partnerships. Okay, you're in the iron net front lines yeah. here as part of that ecosystem. How do you see the ecosystem formula of developing? Is it the same kind of model? Is it a little bit different? What's your vision of the ecosystem? Yeah. Look, I mean, partnerships channel, it's critical to every cybersecurity company. You can't scale on your own, you got to do it through others, right? I was at a CrowdStrike event the other day, 91% of the revenue comes from the channel. That's an amazing number, you think about that, right? And so you look at who we're trying to talk about partnering with. We're talking about some of the big cloud players, Amazon, Microsoft, right, Google, right? On the, on the vendor side, <coughs> pardon me, Splunk, CrowdStrike, some of these big players, right? We want to build with them, right? We want to work with them, because there's a story to tell here, right? When we work together, the ecosystem itself is defended stronger. There's no, there's no anonymity here, right? It's all we bring especially, you bring especially, you work together, you run out and go get, the, go get the business and make companies safer. At the end of the day, it's all about protecting the ecosystem. What about the big cloud player? Because there's two big mega trends, obviously, cloud computing at scale, right. multi-cloud on the horizon, hybrid's kind of the bridge between single public cloud and multi-cloud, sure. and then AI. You got the big, these are genera will be multiple generations of innovation and right. value creation. What's your vision on the impact of the big waves that are coming? Well look, I mean, cloud computing has already changed the world, right? Today, you can deploy capability and have a supercomputer at your fingertips in, in minutes, right? You can also secure that in minutes because you can update it in real time as the machine is functioning. You have a problem, take it down, throw up a new virtual machine. These are amazing innovations that are creating more and more capability out there in the industry. It's game changing, we're, happy, we're glad to be part of that, we're glad to be helping defend that new amazing ecosystem 
partnering with companies like Microsoft and AWS. Jamil, you know, I'm really impressed with your <coughs> technical acumen. You get a good grasp of the industry, but also uh, you have really strong on the societal impact, yeah. policy formulation side of uh, government and yeah. business. So I want to get your thoughts. For the young kids out there that are going to school, trying to make sense of the chaos that's going on in the world, whether it's yeah. DC political theater or the tech theater, big tech, and in general, all the things with coronavirus, all this stuff going on, it's a, it's a pretty crazy time. But a lot of work has to start getting done that are new problems. Yeah. What is your advice as someone who's been through the multiple waves to the young kids who have to figure out what path to take? Yeah. What problems are out there? What things can people get their arms yeah. around to work on, to specialize in? What's your, what's your thoughts and, and expertise on that? Well John, thanks for the question. What I really like about that question is, is we're thinking about what the future looks like. And here's what I think the future looks like. It's all about taking risk. Talk about a lot of these young kids out there today, they're worried about how the world looks, right? Will America still be strong? Can we, can we get through this hard time we're going through in DC with the world challenging us? And what I can say is, this country has never been stronger. We may have our own troubles internally, but we are risk takers and we always win, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how bad it gets, right? Risk taking is something that's built in the American blood. It's our founders came here, taking a risk leaving England to come here, and we've succeeded for the last 200 years. There is no question in my mind that trend will continue. So the young people out there, I don't know what the future has to hold, I don't know what the new technology is going to be, but you're going to invent it, and if you don't take the risks, we're not going to succeed as a nation. And that's what I think is key. You know, most people worry that if they, if they take too many risks, they might not succeed, right? But the reality is most people you see around here at this convention, they all took risks to be here. Yeah. And even when they had trouble, they got up, they dusted themselves off, and they won. And I believe that everybody in this country, that's what's amazing about this nation is, we had this opportunity to, to try, if we fail, to get up again and yeah. succeed. So fail fast, fail often, and crush it. You know, some of the best innovations have come from times where you had the Cold War, you had, um, you had times where you know, the hippie revolution spawned the computer revolution. So you, so you have the culture of America, which is not about regulation and stunting growth. You had risk taking, you had entrepreneurship. Exactly right. But yet enough freedom for business to operate to solve new challenges. Exactly right. And to me, the biggest imperative in my mind is this next generation has to solve a lot of those new questions. What side of the street does the self-driving cars go on? I see bike lanes in San Francisco, yeah. more congestion, more, more crime, all this stuff's going on. AI could be a great enabler for yeah. that. Cybersecurity, a yeah. direct threat to our country and global geopolitical landscape. Yeah. These are big problems. They are. State and local governments, they're not really tech savvy, they don't really have a lot of IT. So what do they do? How do they serve their, their constituents? You know, look John, these are really important and hard questions, but what we know, what has made technology so successful in America? What's made it large successful is the government has stayed out of the way, right? Industry and innovators have had a chance to work together and do stuff and change the world, right? You look at California, you know, one of the reasons California is so successful and Silicon Valley is so dynamic, you can move between jobs and we don't enforce non-compete agreements, right? Because you can switch jobs and you can go to that next higher value target, right? That shows the value of you know, innovation, creating innovation. Now, there's a real tendency to say when we're faced with challenges, well, the government ought to step in and solve that problem, right? The Silicon Valley and what California's done, what technology's done, is a story about the government staying out and let innovators innovate, and that's a real opportunity for this nation. We got to keep on down that path, even when it seems like the easier answer is, come on in DC, come on in Sacramento, fix this problem for us. We have demonstrated as a country that Americans and individuals are good at solving these problems, we should allow them to do that and innovate. You know, one of my passions is to kind of uh, use technology and media to, and communities to get to the truth faster. A lot of um, uh, access to smart minds out there. But young the minds. Young minds, uh, old minds, young minds, oh, it's all there. Got to get the data out, and that's going to be a big, big thing. Absolutely. But one of the things that's changing is the dark arts of smear campaigns. The story at Bloomberg today, Oracle reveals funding for dark money group fighting big tech, internet accountability project. Um, and so the classic astroturfing, you got the Jedi contract, Google lawsuit with Java, so Oracle's in the middle of all this, but I'm using them as an illustrated point. The lawyers seem to be running the kingdom right now. I know you're an attorney, so I don't really Recover, be, I'm a recovering lawyer, John, be clear, <laughs> okay. recovering lawyer. I don't want to be offensive, but entrepreneurships yeah. cannot be stifled by regulation. Yeah. Sarbanes Oxley slowed down a lot of the IPO, yeah. shifts to the later stage capital, so regulation is never a good thing, but also, some of these little tactics out in the shadows are going to be revealed. What's yeah. the new way to get this 
straightened out in your mind? Well look, in my view, the best uh, solution for problematic speech or problematic people is more speech, right? Let's, let's shine a light on it, right? If there are people doing shady stuff, let's talk about it, let's out it, let's have it out in the open, and let's fight it out. At the end of the day, what America's really about is smart ideas winning. And so let's get the ideas out there. You know, we spend a lot of time right now, we're under attack by the Russians when it comes to our elections, right? We spend a lot of time carping at one another, one party versus another party, the president versus that person, this person at the intelligence committee versus that person at the intelligence committee. It's crazy when the real threat is from the outside. We need to get past all that noise, right, and really get to the, the next thing, which is we're fighting a foreign enemy on this front. We need to face that enemy down and stop killing each other yeah. with, with this nonsense. And turn the lights on, I'm a big believer of if something can be exposed, you can talk about it, why is it happening, and, exactly and right. there's consequences with that, reputation, et cetera. You got it. Jamil, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate your insight. Um, I want to just ask you one final question. Yeah. As you look at, look at the industry right now, what is the most important story that people are talking about, and what is the most important story that people should be talking about? Yeah. Well look, I think the one story that's out there a lot, right, is what's going on in our politics, what's going on in our elections. Um, you know, Chris Krebs at DHS has been out here this week talking a lot about the threat that our elections face and the importance about states working with one another and states working with the federal government to defend the nation when it comes to these elections in November, right? We need to get ahead of that, right? The reality is it's been four years since 2016. We need to do more. That's a key issue. Going forward, what do the Iranians and North Koreans think about next? They haven't hit us recently, we know it's coming. We got to get ahead of that. We got to come together as a nation defending against that threat too. Jamil, great to have you on theCUBE as always. Great insight, thanks for coming on and sharing thanks, your John. perspective. I'm John Furrier here at RSA in San Francisco for theCUBE coverage. Thanks for watching.